I just spent the last week implementing client-side predictive movement for my first-person Unity game. I've been working on a character controller for my multiplayer first-person sword fighting game, and it's very broken. <laughs> Non-host players encounter a lot of jitter, which looks like this, this, and this. And how did I break it? Well, I built a little too much without testing any of it. In case you don't know, client-side prediction and its counterpart, server authentication, is a system in which we run parallel simulations of the game. The clients will capture what their players are doing as input frames, which is a structure containing what buttons the players are pressing at a given time. The client will use these input frames to update the local simulation. Then the input frames are sent to the server, which will run its own simulation. The server will capture the player's state and send it back to the client. The client can use this state information to keep synchronized with the server. If the client and server simulation stay in sync, then remote players will move as if they're running locally. If the two simulations desync, then the players are going to stutter and jolt when the accurate state information is received. When I originally implemented client-side prediction in January, I ran into various issues, which all fall into two categories. One, there's values that the server should be correcting and it's not. Two, values that affect our simulation are being changed independently of our simulation and therefore not getting replicated to the other simulation. Both of these are going to cause the player to jitter, jolt, snap to position, or really just fuck up, which does not feel good to play. What does feel good is that the character controller library that I have been using updated all their examples to include a client-side predictive character controller using Fishnet. It's extremely basic, but it works. So today we're gonna to be taking this basic third-person character controller that can move around and jump and turn it into a first-person character controller that can also double jump, crouch, and sprint. Oh, and I haven't introduced myself. My name is Frank, and I bought a blazer just for this video. I'm channeling my inner Nick Valenci, bonus points if you know who that is. Anyways, I'm Frank, I make games, and today we're gonna be slowly unfolding and expanding upon an example character controller until we have a basic character controller, and we're gonna do it right. That way I only have to do this once, I really don't wanna to have to dive back into this again. Okay, the first thing I did was split the code from this example into two scripts, a player driver and a player pawn. The pawn is going to handle all of our simulation code and the driver is going to handle input and our net code. Unfortunately, I do have to blur some of this because it's from a paid asset, but it's going to be manipulated enough soon that I'll be able to show it off. So how does all this work? On our player driver, we are going to save an input frame and pass it to this simulate function on a set tick rate. Simulate is where we're gonna put all of our movement code and the fishnet library will automatically send an RPC to our server with that same input frame that we're using here to keep our simulations in sync. Anything that changes the state of the player is gonna to have to go through this simulate function or else we're gonna desync from the server. Character state frames are then made after the simulation is updated on the server and sent back to all of our clients. So that's the basic setup. Let's get to adding some new features. All right, let's get the hard part over with. It's time to make this character first person. Ignorantly, we just need to attach a camera to our player. However, we are gonna need to rotate this camera. So I implemented a root and eye system. We're gonna rotate the root around the Y axis and we're gonna rotate the eye around the X axis because these are our two axes of mouse movement, up and down and left and right. Now I could remove the root object and just rotate the player around the Y axis, but in the future, I'm gonna want to be able to change the gravity and send the player through teleporters, get subscribed. So we're gonna need to keep the rotation of the player and the rotation of the eye separate. And this works. We send a 2D look vector into our simulate call and update the rotation of the player's camera accordingly. Also, I changed the movement direction calculation to be relative to the direction that the player is looking. So this works, but you might be able to see what's wrong. It's that God damn stutter again. Before looking into our replicate or reconcile code, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> this isn't fair, I'm asthmatic. If we change the tick rate, it changes the amount of stutter. If we have a 30 hertz monitor, then at 30 ticks per second, everything feels fine. But some monitors can do 60, 120, even 300 hertz. So it's unreasonable to try and run the server at that many ticks a second. So we are going to need to untie our movement and our mouse look from our tick rate. And we can do that with Okay, so I don't want to explain every interpolation mechanic, but in plain, we do not update the actual position and rotation of the player every tick. We update a rotation and position target. Then we'll smoothly move to those targets over the frames between the current tick and the next tick. This means that the player will always be seeing one tick behind and I don't care. Comment all you like, but this is an arcade sword fighting game. It really doesn't matter if there's 15 to 30 milliseconds of delay that goes from actually imperceivable to barely perceivable. So we sprinkle in this interpolation and voila, it works smoothly this time. This is feeling so much better and now we can set the tick rate to something that is actually reasonable to calculate 
all of the physics stuff at any time and we don't have to keep it as high as we want our frame rate to be. So the tick rate can be even as low as 10 to 15 times a second and it will still feel okay. Effectively our position and rotation are now updating with the frame rate and not the tick rate. With that, some bug fixing notes. First, we should only render from cameras that our players actually control. If every player has a camera, then the first player that spawns in will be fine. But when the second player spawns in, the second player's camera is gonna be rendered on top of our first person's camera. And this is gonna just make it impossible for the first person to play. Second, when we're not on the host, we should only be updating the camera rotation targets when we're not replaying input frames. I haven't mentioned this up until this point, but non-hosts receive replayed input data in case they haven't gotten the firstly created frame. This is done in case of packet loss, and because of this, the non-hosts get bombarded with extra packets, and interpreting them as normal input frames would just cause our local camera to rotate much faster than on the server and desync. This would further cause issues if we try and move because our movement is relative to our look vector, and if our look vectors are different, all our movement would desync sync and be jolty as the server tries to correct it. Now with all those bugs patched up, we can get back to adding in abilities. I added another input to our input frame, which we're gonna send into our simulate call. With that, I altered our movement code so we can now reference a max speed, which returns a max speed value depending on some conditions, like if we're sprinting. Here's what that looks like. Honestly, it's not very noticeable unless I make the sprint speed super fast, but trust me, it's working at slower speeds too. In order to add in crouching, I added another input to our struct, and we're gonna use that to change our root height. At first, this is a little jittery, so I sprinkled on a little bit more of that interpolation code to smooth out our transition between heights. I also changed the player's movement speed when they're crouched, so that's crouching. Easy peasy. So the last thing I wanna add today is double jump. Ideally, we just need to keep account of how many times we can jump and how many times we have jumped, right? We just increment the counter every time that we jump? Well, mostly. This works on the server, but since we call our simulate function on the non-host clients with replayed inputs, we have a mismatch of what is allowed in each simulation. There's two issues we need to avoid with this double jump. First, we need to make sure that we reconcile the jump counter. That is, the server needs to send the correct value for how many times each player has jumped and second, we need to avoid incrementing this counter when frames are replayed. Like camera look, if we allow repeated input frames to increment this jump counter, then when a non-host player jumps, their counter will increment once when they jump, and then again when we receive the first replayed input frame. This is going to cause the client to think that the player has already jumped, so when the player jumps again, the client's going to say, fuck no, you've already jumped twice, and nothing's going to happen. However, that input frame is going to be sent to the server, which has the correct jump count. The player will then jump in the server simulation, and then the server will send the character state information back to the client, in which the client goes, oh, we did jump, and then jolts the player to the position it's supposed to be in. So we only increment the counter on first time inputs, and we make sure that the server is sending corrected information. Now we will only see players jolt if we have packet loss. With that done, we now have a basic player. So next time we're gonna set up variable gravity direction, volume detections, and planets. Get subscribed if you wanna check that out, but you can't wait for the next video. I'll be working on it live on stream. And if you wanna see the bigger project I'm working on, then go watch this video, in which I built a fleet of movement mechanics, which evidently don't work if we're not on the server which is why I'm in this mess in the first place. Peace.